When it comes to world geopolitics, there are several terms that you might have heard thrown around at times, one of which is the concept of a superpower. So what is a superpower, and what countries have, currently, and will count as superpowers? Now just to get things out of the way, this isn't a video about superheroes. That's just... no, I already made that joke last week. Anyway. When you look at a map, it's incredibly clear that not all nations are created equal. This is very obvious with physical size, but it is also true with population, GDP, climate, political stability, Big Mac prices, and several other factors. One other way this is true, however, is with power projection, specifically over other countries. In short, one leader of a certain country might have more power on the world stage than the leader of a country roughly the same size. In the real world, the more powerful nation could influence the economy and politics of the less powerful country, and thus a superpower is basically a country that does this a lot of different times. In these terms, a superpower can thus be described as a nation with a sphere of influence over other nations on a global scale. Influence in this case mainly related to politics, economics, and the military, but can also include soft power in things like arts and culture. This is not to be confused with regional powers, however. Again, since superpowers exert their power all over the globe, almost regardless of geography, whereas a regional power only has influence over... well... Currently, the only country that is right now a superpower is the United States, and though that is likely to change in the next few decades, this wasn't exactly the case during the Cold War. Turn the calendar back to the latter half of the 20th century, and the balance of power looks drastically different as the Soviet Union was the other superpower on the world stage. The USSR and the UACR were at this time the most powerful nations in the world, as the two nations with atomic bombs. As they had atomic bombs and were at odds with each other, but also both realized that a direct war would likely cause the extinction of the human race, they instead decided to take out their frustration on other nations. Through this, both sides had effectively established spheres of influence over the rest of the world. Although it very frequently shifted, the US's sphere of influence was mainly over Western Europe, Oceania, and select parts of Africa, the Middle East, Latin America, and the Moon, whereas the Soviet sphere of influence was more concentrated over Eastern Europe, much of Asia, and other select parts of Africa, the Middle East, Latin America, and the rest of the universe. This became clear with the various proxy wars that the US and USSR fought in Korea, Vietnam, and Afghanistan, as well as other proxy wars in China, Greece, Paraguay, Myanmar, Angola, Egypt, Central America, Bolivia, Congo, Yemen, Chad, Nigeria, South Africa, the Philippines, Ethiopia, Lebanon, and way too many other places to name. In each civil war, the US and USSR would support opposing regimes and governments, and if a government under their sphere of influence were to go a bit too far away from them on the political spectrum, they would probably just force them somewhat more cooperative. Thus, these wars weren't so much the US versus the USSR, so much as North Vietnam, supported by the USSR and China, versus South Vietnam, supported by the US and NATO. Of course, the US and USSR weren't the only two nations to have been considered superpowers. As recently as the end of World War II, the British Empire was considered to be the third superpower, until it became clear that the areas that made it so super didn't exactly like Britain being so super. Further back, many different empires could also have been considered superpowers, from the Roman Empire to China's various dynasties to the Mongol Empire to prehistoric Czechoslovakia. However, with the USSR having collapsed in 1991, the US has essentially been the only superpower on the world stage, though this is changing with the rise of other potential superpowers. You really can't talk about superpowers these days without talking about future superpowers. After all, just take one look at the comment section of this video and tell me how long it takes for you to find someone talking about their own country becoming a superpower. Possibly the most likely contender at the current moment is China, the world's most populous nation and one that has been growing rapidly both economically and militarily. The, quote, rise of China has become one of the most talked about events in world geopolitics, and Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative isn't exactly going to dissuade that notion. Not that they're trying to do that. What does the Belt and Road Initiative have to do with this? Well, the project is a massive undertaking by the Chinese government to turn the tides of global trade more towards themselves, by building everything from seaports in Sri Lanka to trains in Turkey to bridges in Bangladesh. Historically, all the cool kids on the world stage established themselves along trade routes, notably the Silk Road trade routes that China is effectively working to bring back through this project. As countries like Singapore have found out, being the middleman in world trade most certainly has its perks. Over 60 countries have currently signed some form of agreement with China, 
where China will build some kind of infrastructure project in the country in exchange for economic and often also political favors. Although not actually a single country, though we're going to treat it like it is just to make things easier, the European Union also has arguments in favor of becoming a new superpower. This, however, is very much a double-edged sword, as the EU has a vast population and an incredibly strong economy, but they aren't quite as integrated as they would be under a single nation. A good look at the UK will tell you that much. And yes, Brexit has also put a bit of a dampener on these goals, though the EU is also set to grow in other ways. The individual member states of the EU, even the most powerful ones like Germany and France, likely wouldn't be able to compete against powers like the US, China, and Russia on their own, but unifying in such a way could dramatically shift the balance of power. India has also been making some claims to fame as a new superpower, as the second most populous country in the world and the world's largest democracy. India, as well as China, isn't exactly the richest country in the world though, but its economy is growing very fast. Predictions have also been made that India's high levels of English proficiency will significantly help it out on the world stage in some ways. There are also other countries projected to become superpowers in the near future, including Brazil and Russia. However, the mere question of which countries will achieve superpower status and when is a minefield of arguments, theories, financial projections, and toxic comment sections. The label of superpower is a fairly recent one, only dating back to around World War II and it can be somewhat problematic to talk about, as the term superpower doesn't necessarily have any set requirements. It's not like there's a set boundary between countries that definitely are superpowers and countries that definitely are not, so really it's more of a see what feels good and hope it sticks kind of thing. As always, thanks for watching, and be sure to like and share this video if you enjoyed it. If you want to help support the channel, do consider supporting these videos on Patreon for some cool perks. But even if you don't want to go that far, you can still always just subscribe to learn something new every Sunday.